move up fairly quickly, but a monster game by Richardson. And that's what you like to see, those video game numbers, three touchdowns on the ground from a quarterback. Yeah. His stats will pile up here throughout the season. They certainly will. On the other side of this, though, for Utah, what a nightmare. I mean, what an absolute nightmare. Look, at Florida's a tough spot to play, no doubt about it. You were a favorite in the game, but it's not like you were a touchdown favorite. But it's still a nightmare because this was a veteran group that if they were able to handle their business could possibly make the college football playoff. Yep. Well, now the only way this team can make the college football playoff is by running the table. And they did not get a favorable draw in terms of Pac-12 scheduling. They have to play USC, Oregon, and UCLA. And again, if they were able to march through all of that unbeaten, they'd have to then still win the Pac-12 championship game. To say Utah's season ended right off of the gates might sound a little over the top, but when you consider the expectations for this team were college football playoffs, their season ended, I think, against Florida. Yeah, and I like the minus 2.5, minus 122, which is up there primarily for the week here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. And also, the way you look, if you look at 29-26, well, how did it go here? Florida just held them at length the entire game. They just couldn't over, overcome that and failed on their final draft. No, Kevin. 7 nothing, yeah. tied up at 7-7. They take a lead at 10 to seven then again at 13 to seven take another lead at 19 14 26 22 and that's with 6 26 left to go in the fourth quarter get one stop win the football game you couldn't do it so even though rising mm -hmm. had a brutal interception at the end of the game where even if they went you know three and out down in the red zone you kick the field goal go to at two overtime at that point but you can't have the lead all the way through a veteran team needs to know how to shut that door and they couldn't do it to florida yeah. and you mentioned there was a turnover on downs down on the goal line where they left yeah. points on the table the interception, they allowed Anthony Richardson to pick up a fourth and short as well on the touchdown drive that ultimately did put Florida up. So a really, really nightmarish situation for the Gators. So many big games over the weekend, but I think we have to talk about last night's action as well. The Clemson Tigers enter this season in a really interesting spot. Uh, they are trying to tell people, this was really interesting to hear on the broadcast, Davo Sweeney is trying to compare DJU and Cade Klubnik to when Trevor Lawrence was there with DJU behind him. And on the broadcast, they made the point that I think anybody really watching this will understand. This is way more similar to when Trevor Lawrence was behind Kelly Bryan. And Kelly Bryan had about three or four games before everybody said, you know what, this is a championship-level roster. We need to put our best quarterback in. And they put Trevor Lawrence in, and they won the national championship. DJU's final statistics... 19 for 32, 209 yards and a touchdown, 13 carries for 28 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Listen, Kate Klubnik was out there for just one series, but if you were watching this game, I thought he looked far more explosive at the quarterback position. He just looked really better than DJU. While it was one drive, it was impressive, and I thought it was very noteworthy. It is noteworthy because you have a championship-level defense here. You play in the ACC. You should be printing yourself into that Final Four for the college football playoff. But the one thing that's going to hold you back for going up against the big boys, the Georgias, the Alabamas of the world, is quarterback play. You can't just sit back and wait till five and then run around and try to go off schedule and make plays. you got to be decisive. Three strep drops, balls out before the wide receiver even turns his head. Now, having said that, Kevin, they got a long way to work this out, and I think they want to work that out with DJ. But at the same time, if you can switch into somewhere later in the season, and I know it's hard to do. These guys got, you know, ad campaigns already out there. But if Uyunga Lele goes out and he is the number two quarterback, but they use him in run pass sets on like the goal line, watch out for this offense. And I know we're a long way off from doing that. But boy, if he still plays that team part, if he loses his job, let's probably say week six or week seven, and they make the move to Cade. You want to talk about if he's still engaged in that offense, that Cam Newton-like effect, watch out for Clemson. The potential, really, Kevin, is there. The thing, it, you know, Kate is so explosive. I wouldn't be worried about DJU as the goal line back. You've got Will Shipley. You'll be fine in that respect here. The, this is the – so we just talked about the Georgia schedule, right, where they're basically going to be able to sleepwalk until November. Clemson's next game is Furman. All right. Then they're going to play La Tech at home. Should be no problem. We'll see what at Wake Forest is like. We have a couple of Wake games to try and figure out what this whole non-Sam Hartman era football uh, is going to be for them. 
maybe Sam Hartman is back. And at that point, that'll be a big game. After that is home versus NC State. Now, NC State did not cover themselves in glory in their game against East Carolina. Probably really should have lost that football game, but it's a rivalry game. It was week number one. You want to have your decision made going into that NC State game. Clemson has an ability, not all too different, Donnie, than Michigan, to have a quarterback battle happening while playing real meaningful football here. They need to know by October 1st if it's Kate Klubnick's team or not. But do they, though? We've seen about 15 years ago, you talk about Urban Meyer and that Florida Gators team where Tim Tebow came in as a freshman along with C.J. Leak, and they ran rough shot. He was the power back. C.J. Leak was the thrower there, and they worked it wonderfully. I'm not saying they can do that perfectly and thread that needle, but the talent is there for both of those guys, a passer and a runner combination. We've seen teams win national championships. Maybe they can do it. The tough thing is for DJU, who at one point in time looked like a clear-cut, obvious yeah. first-round quarterback, probably top five pick. If he is benched for Cade Klubnik, does he have to come all the way back to school again in a different program? Uh. It's just an interesting thing to see. We pause on the college football scene, and we go to the NFL next right here on the Early Line. be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice Fantasy Sports Today. Her cousins threw for 4,000 yards last year, 33 touchdowns. Essentially, he is a fantastic super flex quarterback. To have him as your number one super flex is fantastic. Do you see any drop back for him? I mean, Kirk Cousins has been a very good fantasy quarterback. I, I don't know if I would draft Cousins as a starter simply because I want to have a guy who can run, but I think he's a good option. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. There are four of the five teams in the American League East in contention for American League playoff spots at the moment. And it's not the Red Sox, as we all assumed it would be entering the season. It's the Baltimore Orioles. Because when was the last time we could say the O's were even in postseason contention? At this time, to start off the month of September, the Baltimore just keeps sticking around, keeps winning baseball games. And the Baltimore Orioles have been incredible. The Sports Grid Network. A-Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on SportsGrid. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Scene shifts to the West Coast with a joint venture that will benefit Sacramento. Sacramento Kings, Sacramento River Cats joining forces to take advantage of the synergies in sports marketing in that community. The Savage family, a very successful entrepreneurial group that created a ballpark in Sacramento that helped downtown development. And Vivek Ranadive, the owner of the Sacramento Kings, certainly has generated significant support. Remember when they were the Kansas City Omaha Kings and then the Kansas City Kings went to Sacramento, questionable possibilities. They've succeeded as much in the market, not necessarily on the floor. But the bottom line is both companies bring their assets to the state capital. And with gambling soon to be approved, the sky is the limit for a city that has a major league team and one that acts like one as well. Sports Professor Ricaro, Sports News Minute. The NFL season.
season is knocking on the door. Man, incredible. Thursday, we are going to be having the Buffalo Bills travel to Los uh, Angeles, go against the Super Bowl champs, the L.A. Rams. Absolutely pumped up for it. But we did get some big pieces of NFL news over the weekend that are noteworthy as we look at games that are going to be happening on the Sunday. We start with the Jets and the Ravens. And the Lamar Jackson contract conversation is not going anywhere at least for now. We'll see when they can work that deal out. But there's also some questions around the other side of the field in their quarterback and Zach Wilson. Questionable for this game, but I didn't anticipate that we would be talking about Zach Wilson playing in this game. You flash back to when you found out about the Zach Wilson injury, you probably thought to yourself, there's his season. There's the Jets season. I know that's what I had initially thought as well. Pot- potential for him to play in the opening matchup, Donnie, against the Baltimore Ravens. I- I'm not going to ask you if you think you will, but I- if he does play in the game, how would that impact how you impact how you approach this one? Nothing, and I probably wouldn't even like the Jets. I- granted, I preface this by saying I'm not really zeroing in on the Jets-Ravens game, but I, I love the concept here of, where do you think this would change? If you were betting this game, who would you rather see a quarterback? Well, a healthy Zach Wilson, sure I would. Able to move around the pocket. Now he's not the veteran presence that you get out of Joe Flacco, but that's your future. That's why he drafted the kid. The arm town is there. The moxie is there. He's going to throw balls in tight windows here to see if he can get away with it, which sometimes lead to bad plays, but also can lead to explosive plays a la Brett Favre. But if I'm looking from a week one perspective, you say, Donnie, you have to bet this game right now, and here's who your quarterback's going to be, or who do you want your quarterback to be? It's Joe Flacco in this game. Donnie, that's stupid. Why would you do that? I can't risk my future quarterback going out there where you know what he's going to say. We're all human beings, Kevin. When you play at that level, you want to be in there as much as possible, particularly if you're a quarterback. Let's just say Joe Flacco goes out there and wins game one over the Ravens. Oh, uh, there's not going to be a quarterback controversy, but it certainly doesn't help the feelings of Zach Wilson trying to get back out there, even if he feels a little bit of a tweak or a twinge on a Wednesday or Thursday practice this week. You know what he's going to tell his head coach, Kevin? I feel great, man. Put me out there. Save him from himself. Start Joe Flacco and keep your franchise kid healthy for the majority of the season. It's a no-brainer for me. It really is. I agree with you because, you know, when the Zach when the Zach Wilson injury popped up and we thought that his season was over, I said, man, there goes the Jets' entire year. And some people replied, what do you mean? You think Zach Wilson's that good? They weren't going to the play. Is this, no, 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 no. The the Jets' record largely is relevant to judging this season. It's just all about the quarterback play for Zach Wilson. So you might hear them think, oh, so then they should force him out there. No, because you're going to need double-digit games at least from Zach Wilson. So forcing the matter is just not going to be good. I'll say, though, I will be a little more interested, I think, maybe in a full game over as a poor, in terms of, or perhaps maybe a, a side or anything like that, if Joe Flacco is the quarterback. Only because I don't think I can trust if Zach Wilson is out there, how sharp he might be battling through the injuries. I, I think we're seeing it similarly here. In this spot, no matter what you think about Zach Wilson long term, I think the Jets have a chance to be more competitive with Joe Flacco in this opening matchup here. Plus, you let him play the Ravens, a little rivalry. Why not? Everybody's doing it week one. Yeah, and you guessed right here on this. We talk about the Seattle Seahawks, right? Well, Drew Locke can't be the star. Well, if you're going to miss practice time, those are reps that you need to head into the regular season, yeah. particularly with a young quarterback that's looking to just get some advantages on his side. Hey, look, I feel comfortable here. We've all played throughout high school, whatever level that you had. There's a difference between playing injured and playing hurt. If you're hurt, you sprain an ankle, you can still do some things, but it's still in the back of your head. Imagine a quarterback with the rush bearing down on him going, I need to wait an extra half second to throw this football but maybe I don't have that time now because I'm worried about my knee. You can't do this to the kid. If you ask him, do you want to play? What is he going to say? Of course, I feel ready to mm-hmm. play. Save him from himself. It's a long season, and you're hoping to get a long career out of this kid. Certainly so. Looking at more injury updates here, Alan Lazard is questionable, and I thought this was interesting. I mean, last year, if Alan Lazard was questionable, right, <laughs> when would we reference Who? it? Yeah, right? I mean, the first time you would hear us talk about that 
would be a Friday breakdown as an additional reason as to why we like Devontae Adams anytime touchdown score. And that would largely be it. Instead, we're now talking about the Green Bay Packers in a very, very important, some could argue the most important game of week number one, a very important matchup against the Minnesota Vikings on the road, spread working down a little bit now to one and a half. If Alan Lazard is out there, I continue to have no idea, or not out there rather, I have no idea how odds makers are meant to book the props in the Green Bay Packers receiving core. I, I don't know. And, it, you know, it, it just Randall Cobb now goes to the lead. How about Sammy Watkins? You said about Sammy Watkins, who would give you three plays and then limp off yeah. to the side of the field. Or how about this? The return of Robert Tunyon at tight end. That's going to make up all the difference. I don't know what's going to happen. This is why you take a look at the Green Bay Packers this year. And there's so many question marks around. Yes, they probably have the most talented overall quarterback to ever play the position. But is that going to be enough? He's also, Kevin, not 29 years mm -hmm. old anymore, heading into his 40s here and being on the back end of his career, and you're asking him to do so much more. But it is funny that you bring that up. Alan Lazard is injured. Who cares? They have other wide receivers and other guys that can make plays for him. Valdez Scantling's out there. Obviously, you know, Devontae Adams. But now when you look at it, your lead dog is Alan Lazard that Aaron Rodgers has hyped up here all offseason, and he might not go. What are they going to do? Wing T offense game one against the Minnesota Vikings? This is what Green Bay asked for, and it looks like this is what they're going to get. There actually happen to be touchdown score props available right now already for this game. Uh, what would you say? The expectation is that Rodgers is going to throw two touchdowns, just usually, right, based on the way his props yeah. would be booked. Sure. Right? Okay. So here's where the pass-catching group for Green Bay checks in. Robert Tunyon is the favorite at plus 190. Alan Lazard, plus 195. Sammy Watkins, same price. Randall Cobb, plus 220. Christian Watson, same price. And then, whoa, you look down all the way there. Romeo Dobes, plus go. 360. Line That's him up and down. knock him down. I mean, boy, and, and, and it used to be so much easier to pick these, but now are you just throwing darts? Like, is that what we're doing at wide receiver? Anybody can do it. I would take the last guy on the roster to be active on game day, mm -hmm. that fifth or sixth wide receiver, and just take him. Because you're saying, usually you enter in the game, go, Devontae Adams is going to get his, right? Now this Gantling next in line, ooh, I don't know if I want to go down that far because Devontae Adams could catch three touchdown passes. You're probably more likely in week one, you have no idea where we're going here with the Green Bay Packers, which is a great point you bring up. The sports books don't know either. Give me the longest shot at a wide receiver that's going to take snaps. That's the guy I'm taking on Sunday to score a touchdown in the air from Aaron Rodgers. I will say it's nice to see some of these numbers coming off of a college football weekend. Jackson Smith and Jig, but you know, minus 220 anytime touchdown <laughs> score. And then there's Justin play, Jefferson, plus 115. It's just, it's just nice to see the NFL numbers, which uh, are, feel a lot uh, easier to digest. Last one I want to get to here, at least in this yeah. uh, segment. Mitchell Trubisky named a captain and a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maybe this is me, and that's fine. But why are you naming Mitchell Trubisky a captain if this is going to be this whole, oh, don't worry, he'll be benched in four weeks? I believe that they believe in Pittsburgh that Trubisky is going to be their guy for the full season. I don't know, but I think it's the right thing to do. But also, you know, my favorite thing is here. Do you know when a quarterback is not really entrenched as the starter, Kevin? When the news breaks out of Pittsburgh to start this week, the unofficial starting uh, you know, quarterback is going to be Mitchell Trubisky, which means somebody got a glimpse of the depth chart, but it's not an official depth chart, so we can't announce it. You know when starters know when they're really the starter? Coming in the training camp or a week in the training camp with like Baker Mayfield where it's a de facto, yeah, we're going to have a competition, but we already know. We just want to be fair and don't embarrass Sam Darnold at this point here. But the fact that the Pittsburgh Steelers, Kevin, went all through the offseason training camp up to the third preseason game, and now we sit here on a Tuesday and we have the unofficial starting quarterback here due to the unofficial depth chart that was released. That's how you know a guy is not going to make it the entire season. But naming him the captain feels very odd to me. 
You don't week bench week, captains. Yeah, I don't think they just hand the C out like a rotating badge, right? Like, how good would it have been if they named Kenny Pickett a captain and Mitchell Trubisky the starter? Now, that uh, would have been a good piece of business there out of Pittsburgh. This Steelers opening game is six and a half. The total is 44 and a half. It's early. We'll be here Friday. We'll break every single one of these games down. But Trubisky is going to start this game. You see these numbers. Cincinnati minus six and a half. Total over under 44 and a half. What is your reaction? My reaction is be careful, Donald. Be careful here because last year, my pride and joy Buffalo Bills played this Pittsburgh Steelers team, and I thought they would smash them only for the Steelers to win in game one. Now, having said that, do I think the Steelers are going on the road with Mitchell Trubisky and winning this football game? I actually don't. But if you are going to get the Cincinnati Bengals, Kevin, in one game this season, wouldn't it be before maybe Joe Burrow really gets cooking here, coming back from that appendectomy over the summer? This is probably the game I would want. I'm not going to be surprised because I'm not surprised by anything in the first two weeks of the NFL season. But I don't know if we're looking at this game, Kevin, in the fourth quarter Sunday going, huh, look at the Steelers up 14-13 over the Bengals with Joe Burrow, you know, a little bit rusty in this game. I won't be surprised here. Because it's the NFL and because it's week one, I agree. I won't be surprised. But if Mitchell Trubisky is lighting up Cincinnati, then boy, does Cincinnati have problems. You know, you're Mr. Ugly Team Total, right? I'm sure you've been Mm -hmm. circling Davis Mills numbers all offseason long. It's beautiful. The Steelers number here, I mean, you'll likely be cashing a ticket if they scored 20 points, roughly. It's, I don't think, up kind of uh, specifically here yet on the FanDuel Sportsbook, but all in good time. Oh, no, it is actually oh, up. Him. Oh, perfect. It's 19 and a half. Ooh. I did tremendous, uh, tremendous math. I don't know. That's your guy, Mitchell Trubisky. That's your yeah. guy. 20 points against Cincinnati? Seems light, no? Now, see, when you put me on the spot, I got to defend Mitchell yeah. Trubisky. So I'm going to say, of course, uh-huh. man, three touchdowns on the board for the right. Pittsburgh Steelers. It makes a lot of sense. Maybe in a different tone or a, a way that you're going to ask the question, I might be saying, man, 19. Maybe they're going to get nine points in this game. You got to catch me on the right day for that type of analysis. But 19 and a half? Yeah, let me t- Come on, man. Steelers get 16 points. They're getting waxed in this game. Let's be real. <laughs> I mean, you you would imagine so. That it's it's such a perfect number though because you picture it in your head right where yeah. they only get fourteen points and we immediately will be like you think of Kenny Pickett next week does anyone here think it's it's Kenny Pickett next week right like that is going to be one of the interesting things about this Pittsburgh back and forth is at the end of every single football game it'll feel like yep. we will wonder what is next at the quarterback position oh and and by the way. On the unofficial depth chart, Kenny Pickett isn't the second quarterback. Still Whoa. Mason Rudolph. Yeah, yeah man. I agree. don't know about Kenny we Pickett agree. being the favorite for offensive rookie of the year. We'll be right back. I think truly this is where we're going to find out whether Tua is the guy in Miami. And obviously there's a guy named Lamar Jackson that's sort of now waiting in the wings to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. As bizarre as it was, it was Superman realizing that he's Clark Kent and he walks the earth with, earth with other humans. So um, I don't make too much of it. I think Anthony Joshua now has to embark on a new path for his career. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The early line. We might have thought Donovan Mitchell was headed to New York, but he's headed to Cleveland. A stunning move because it felt like the Knicks were the front runners with a lot of distance here. We found out some really interesting aspects of the Knicks Jazz deal, but really the most pressing thing is what does this mean for Cleveland? And it now is a team that has a completely different ceiling than they did before. Only on Sports Grid. 
Farrell, coast to coast. Big Ten, Ohio State's the favorite as we start the season, minus 225. Michigan, 6-1, to one. and then there goes everybody else. Ohio State doesn't play anyone. It's already over. Ohio State's schedule is so easy. It's the teams that schedule all their non-conference games with nobodies that really gets me going. At least like they're Michigan. playing Notre Dame. I'll, like Michigan. The Sports Grid Network. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Closing out hour number one. In hour number two, we'll get you the Major League Baseball preview. We'll also talk a little week one specials, which I'm very, very excited for. But I wanted to sneak this in here because going around the Twitterverse, apparently reported by Sports Illustrated, but it wasn't something that made its way to the top of the chain, nor was I sure how relevant it was. But for us, in this little spot here, it was perfect. The report, Donnie, suggested that initially... Upon bringing back Jimmy Garoppolo, Niners quarterback Trey Lance was a bit annoyed at the entire thing. And I got to tell you, I don't know who could blame him. So I made this point as I was on Pro Football Today this past weekend with George Kurtz. A lot of people talk about, man, if Trey Lance struggles, they can make the move over to Jimmy Garoppolo. No, they can't. That's not an option. You invested everything into Trey Lance. That is your guy. There's no, hey, if this is going bad, we're going to make Garoppolo the quarterback. Because, Donnie, if that's something that they're thinking about, then everybody in San Fran has lost the plot. Yes, and it's never too early to do this to you, Kevin. The only way that Jimmy Garoppolo ever sees the field this year for the San Francisco 49ers, you ready? You listening over there with your earpiece? No, 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 easy now. Let's start. We're not even a week one. I had to start that. But, again, that is code for... (sighs) Unless Trey Lance gets injured, he can never see the field talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. It makes no yeah. Deactivate Garoppolo even on game day as your third quarterback where he can't even play. That's what you have to do. Congratulations, San Francisco. You did it to yourself. If they bench Trey Lance, by the one. Way, I, I, I'm going to be optimistic on Trey Lance. I think he will play at a level that will avoid benching. But if they bench Trey Lance, who they spent an unbelievable amount of draft picks to go up and draft third to replace Garoppolo, and they bench Trey Lance with Garoppolo, legitimately, you have to look around the room at the general manager and the coach because they might not know what they're doing. The NFL is back. Talk baseball headlines next. 